Hey guys, it's Tommy Vitor, uh, and today Elijah and I are excited to share some content that is usually only accessible if you're a Friends of the Pod subscriber. Friends of the Pod is our Crooked Media subscriber community. You get lots of great benefits like access to exclusive content, uh, like what you're about to hear. We get ads-free episodes of Pod Save America, much, much more. You get our Discord server, which is a really fun chat room. Uh, plus, by subscribing at the best friends level, you're not only enjoying premium content, but you're also helping fuel all the grassroots organizing we are doing through Vote Save America with your recurring donations. So thank you for that. Elijah, what do we got for the people today? Uh, today, we're going big with a best of episode pulled straight from our subscriber exclusive podcast, Terminally Online. Terminally Online is a weekly pod where crooked hosts, staffers, producers get together to commiserate about being way too online as we make the shows here at Crooked Media. I'd also just say it's just in the copy that you and I are excited to share this content. I'd say John and John are excited too. They're just not. They're just on vacation and aren't here to read this. They're just so excited that they left the entire state. But look, the show is a ton of fun. Uh, we're on it all the time. Favre's on, love it on. Uh, it's a rotating crew. People like Aaron Ryan, Alyssa Master Monaco, Dan Pfeiffer, Louis Vertel. We have a blast. It's the loosest show on the Crooked Network uh, and a little silly, but I think you'll enjoy it. Absolutely. At the end of every episode, we rate each other based on how online our topics are. But this week, we need your help to finally settle the great Crooked Media debate. Who is the most online? You can weigh in by joining the Friends of the Pod Discord and vote for who you think is the most online, John, John, or Tommy. My money is on you, Tommy. That's what the copy says. My money's on Love It, actually. Yeah, my money's on Love It, too. He is the only one who is, uh, well, listen and you'll find out. Uh, to join, go to crooked.com slash friends. Uh, and here's the episode. Anyway, now that we've got you hooked with the beginning of the show. <laughs> John, when did you realize you were terminally online this week? Um, all right. As you all know, uh, the uh, the children of uh, famous political families have been uh, causing all sorts of controversy recently. Mm. Uh, we have talked a lot about RFK Jr.'s uh, truly nutty views on vaccines and a host of other issues. Yes. Um, I'm so there, excited you're doing this. <laughs> there is a, a pretty wild take yeah. from another Kennedy that went viral over the weekend. Um, the Rolling Stone headline about this is, a Kennedy himbo's viral rant is making Nepo babies look good. Uh, here's President Kennedy's grandson and Caroline Kennedy's son, Jack Schlossberg, talking about restaurants and we have to wait there to eat something that we don't get to choose really what it is it's, we only have a couple choices and what? you don't know what any of them are going to taste like or what's good to read the menu we have to read something in order to get the food first <laughs> you have to read to get your food because because it ruins your whole life you spend hours and hours eating at restaurants when you could spend a minute and a half eating something that is good for you. And then what would you do? And then you can go fucking lie down, you can go walk around, you could listen to music, you could get work done, you could hang out with your friends. No, but their friends could want to have dinner with you or lunch Not with everyone you. likes dinner. They it's don't? The, yeah, like a, a lot of people, most people in the world don't spend their life eating dinner. <laughs> Who's recording that? Do we know? It's doesn't it sound like Caroline Kennedy? Yeah. Oh God. It sounds like her voice. Oh, Cannot confirm God. that, but it does sound like her. You know what? A uh, few million views for that. Unbelievable. What I'm do you guys so think about restaurants? Are they bad? Are menus bad? I think is people, reading menus. I think people, taxing. I think people born as Kennedys with that bone structure shouldn't be allowed to share opinions. <laughs> no opinions for you. A lot Shut of people were. You haven't people, gotten enough negative feedback in your life. Well, a lot of people are, have been forgiving that uh, viral rant. Because he's so handsome. Yeah, I'll, I'll I be honest. Story of his goddamn life. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. This yeah. is an attractive person's rant about <laughs> the injustice of having to read, which I do. If you are handsome, I do agree you shouldn't have to. <laughs> Our standards of what constitutes a himbo. I'm sorry. I I, I need I, I need jacked shirtless, mm. uh, uh, drooling like uh, this. Drooling. Just just a just a rich. Younger man, it does not a himbo make. I'm sorry. Call, he doesn't des deserve the title of himbo is my first response to I'm that. sorry. His story is that you could, what, why go to a restaurant where you could eat something healthy from th in 90 seconds? What kind of life is that? Just <laughs> eating vegetables over the sink? Shut up. <laughs> go back to Kenny Bunkport and leave us the fuck alone. It's also, it's like, it'll be covered in sugar. It doesn't have to be covered in sugar. You can go yeah. to any kind of restaurant. Say, you're a, say you don't want the miso glaze, you rich fuck. Well, also, it's like... <laughs> 
It's just <laughs> I, I, there's yeah. some, I think he has some confusion about the restaurants he's been to. Like, we only have a couple choices. Like, have you been to the fucking Cheesecake Factory? Right. Plenty of choices there. Plenty of choices. The menu is about a hundred yeah. pages, and and we have to read something in order to get the food first. Have you been to Denny's? Have you seen picture menus? I um I also I am sort <laughs> yeah, of on his shabu side. Shabu shabu, healthy vegetables, pictures on the menu. Check out any a lot of picture menus. But does he know about shabu shabu? In his defense, he did oh, when no. asked what else could, would you be doing but going to a restaurant. He did his first example was go lie down, <laughs> and down. that is what I would like <laughs> to do. So I'm like, he's not wrong. <laughs> he does make some points. <laughs> So. Hey, <clears throat> it ruins your whole life. I don't know. It, it doesn't, doesn't ruin, ruin your, your whole, whole life. life. It's, it's a nice time going out to eat. Hyperbole. Do we? Th- some uh, people uh, thought maybe he had just taken some mushrooms. There is a there's a sort of a angry stoned. Feeling yeah, the to eyes. It. Yeah, yeah. The eyes I think he's off. also. I think there's a little. Um, he's a little in on the joke, right? Yeah, he's exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like fun. it's like, and and why don't they make the whole plane out of the restaurant? It's a little right? little, you know I mean? little Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A little Seinfeld. Look for the Kennedy. I can't remember his name. Sometimes Jack. you got to take in the stable. You think it looks like a uh, thoroughbred, and then you take it on the track, see how it runs, and it's just not that great a take. You know it's got, not going to win. Yeah, shoot it in the end. Putting it down. Yeah. 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 I'm not going yeah, to condemn anyone for having a take. <laughs> that's a what? So You've been bad. consistent on this. <laughs> no, part. that's not, a, yeah. I, you, don't con- you respect mm, anyone for having a any, take. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, variety piece on, the variety piece on this uh, said that there were echoes of Camelot. I'll throw this fucking Diet Coke across the room. <laughs> Echoes of Camelot? Echoes of Camelot? Yeah. Like in what way? Jesus Christ. And it, it somehow grouped uh, Jack's thing with RFK Jr.'s hmm. views because it was like a new generation. It of does ca- seem conspiratorial. Both yeah, of them. yeah, they do. it's conspiratorial. And it may be a, a more benign conspiracy. Yeah, I'd say it, it is. <laughs> I'd say it is more benign. This is how it starts, a little bit though. more. Yeah. If people don't go to restaurants, kids don't die of measles. <laughs> Give him time. Forty years of that, he's gonna be pumping iron oh, yeah, shirtless and starting, jeans. He's starting strong for insanity. Yeah. Thirty years from now, he's absolutely <laughs> he's like, gonna be president. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, when we're all fighting in the Thunderdome, he, st- he waves yeah. at us. Good one. Yeah, it makes you think. It makes you think about. He's just asking questions about restaurants. Yeah, just asking questions. Just asking questions. I get it. I get it. I'm so glad you did this topic. No, I'm just I enjoy a restaurant. I like eating at them. I like uh, enjoying the company of other people who are at the restaurant. I would say it's one of actually the great pleasures in my life. Yeah. Is, I don't know what else rest, I don't know what else I would out. be doing. I don't I do much else. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If and I the, cross that off my list. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know what's a joy too? Hey, you want to meet for dinner at six PM? Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Sign me up. Oh, I mean I I, I now I have a, a toddler. I ate dinner at like five p.m. Yeah, I was. Gonna, I, I get home from this office. I need food immediately. I almost said <laughs> best thing about having a baby, but not the best thing. But one great thing about having a baby is you can make a five p.m. reservation and no one bats an eye at it. Yeah, she's just. We were all just talking about how we've been. Yeah, like I go, I go to Emily and I go to bed, uh, and uh, it's still light out these days. <laughs> The solstice. And all. Oh my goodness! <laughs> solstice. It's the solstice. Eat, eat dinner at five thirty. You're in bed by seven thirty. Sounds like heaven. I'll be absolutely <laughs> yeah. honest. Then Easier then to get a reservation too. Yep. Yeah. Then, yeah. then, it, then it's four thirty a.m. You guys see this article yet? <laughs> huh? They are up early. On the, I'm shocked oh, when I wake up on the wild. east coast and they're it's already. Not, it's up. wild. It's not by choice. It's no, wild. no. Yeah, I wish I could sleep later. My boys are up. My boys are up. My boys are early risers. <laughs> six <laughs> six a.m. is the noon noon. Uh, six a.m. would be so sweet to so sleep. Cool. Oh, to I six. love that. Anyway, you're anyway. you're a three. Okay. Cool. Three. Yeah, I saw three. that. I'm really glad you brought it too. I'm glad someone did. Yeah. No, I figured some people would see it, but I, I wanted to talk about it. Okay. All right, visit the doctor. Uh, love it. When were you two online this week? So, on over the over the weekend, I uh, saw a little indie film um, uh, made for a song called Indiana Jones and the <laughs> Dial of Destiny. Oh, uh, <laughs> how was it? It's great. Okay. Oh, okay. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is great. Awesome. The movies are back. The mo- That's what I thought. I'm sitting there. I'm watching trailers. I'm watching trailers for uh, Oppenheimer. I'm watching trailers for there's there's uh, Dune, there's Dead Reckoning, there's mm-hmm. uh, there's a bunch of movies I'm looking forward to, and I'm sitting there thinking the f- movies are back, 2023 the movies are back, and then someone says no, actually Dial of Destiny is is people think it's bombing, it's doing really poorly, it was really expensive to make it, it's not doing well, what the fuck, it's great. <laughs> so then I start digging. Turns out they got cocky, they mm. brought it to the, the to the Cannes Film Festival, and it only got. A five-minute standing ovation. Oh, that's oh, bad. Oh, wow. Which is apparently that's right? bad. in the great inflation oh. 
era really? of can. You got to watch some can standing goes, my friend. It's five minutes is madness. nothing. Never, five minutes is who's nothing. Who's been watching? Five, who's been watching? Twenty-three minutes for some best supporting actor. But here's what happened: it started getting, it started gave, it gave permission. It's the, the the people that liked it, the reviewers that like it didn't rave, and the reviewers that didn't that didn't like it were able to criticize it and pan mm-hmm. it the same way because Crystal Skull was so bad. But mm-hmm. this is why I wanted to talk about this because it's like people are like, oh, the movies. People have been trained to expect bad shit from these studios for like the Crystal Skull, bad, a bunch of the DC movies, bad, some of the latest Marvel movies have been mediocre. And they're and so people are not going to the theaters as much. And what I wanted to talk about is the fact that Tom Cruise has Dead Reckoning coming out in a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. And uh, can we show the clips? There's two clips of what Tom Cruise is putting out there to get people ready for this movie. The man at this point wants to die, is what I think. He ride. This is real. Tom Cruise rides a motorcycle no. off a cliff in real life, and then uses a parachute. Six times today. Six times today. I mean, it does make me want to see it. What is he doing? He's just burning through motorcycles. Fuck yeah. The parachute opens. Tom Cruise lives. The movies are back. What can and we every say? look at the director with his hands over his fucking face. All right, next clip. Next clip. God, that, that was what? awesome. Yeah. The fuck? Then the next clip. This is only one stunt. Three, two, one, action. <laughs> so look at him. Two cameras, one on each hip. He jumps off a cliff with a parachute. He trained to learn how to do this. That is so dangerous. It's insane. Oh take Why after take. Rocks. It looks quite beautiful. Behind the scenes, we were all in absolute terror. Landing, Tom had to be flying. So what's he doing? Love it. Walk us through what he he's is, doing right now. He is, pa- he is flying with a parachute through the air and flying into a pickup truck to capture a perfect shot of him landing. Oh my it is true. God. A one of a kind. What? Here's what I, here's, that is here's why. terrifying. Imagine what the insurance wow. policy was on the, that. Tom Cruise, oh, yeah. Tom Cruise during the pandemic, there was this viral clip that went out of him on the set when they were shooting during the pandemic, basically screaming that someone had violated COVID protocol. And it got a bit, uh, I would say, uh, um, uh, 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 grand, uh, hoity to, uh, yeah. uh, like um, uh, uh, braggadocious mm. because mm-hmm. he said, uh, mm. you know, we are what stands between the end of movies and movies. Like, Which is we what are... he clearly believes. And you know what? God fucking bless him. <laughs> this guy knows what it takes to get people into the theaters. Mm. He would die for us. Bless Tom he Cruise will would die. die for a box office opening. He will die for us eventually. He's going to save the movies. You're going well, the... to get all the Scientology Thetans people after you. I'll him. tell you something. <laughs> yeah, that's... Barbie's going to save the movies, but okay. And I'll say it. I'll say it once. I'll say it again. If Scientology makes you that awesome, sign me the fuck up. Oh, no. Please Yashar's don't. Yashar's coming God, for you. It's already hard <laughs> enough. Please don't. Hey. What hey. is it? What is it? What hey, is Nick it? Savage, zinc and some, you heard that? Hey, it's Michael McSavage. It's just zinc and some mediocre therapy. Yeah, I'll and he can't it. be gay anymore. <laughs> yeah, I guess you it's, just I get guess, it started. I guess I guess he has to choose between parachutes or kissing a boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. That sounds honestly, fun, but cool also your legs hell. would shatter. You, you think you're doing that? <laughs> yeah, I think I am doing. We just see your body plummet the all second you step is, off a cliff. All I'm saying is, Tom Cruise would die for us. Yeah, I can't. And like mm. that's that's the movies are back. Thank the movies you. are back, oh, baby. Cool. I don't know. I don't know if that makes me online or not. I'll watch I don't that. care. I don't know. That's a good question. I'm excited to see that. I, I as soon as the Indiana Jones thing, as soon as I saw that, I was like, I googled when is it coming to streaming. Yeah. <laughs> see that stinks. I know. Well, I just I, I don't I don't, I don't get to go out to them. You know. Just... I'm seeing Barbie. I'll probably see Oppenheimer, but other than that, I'm seeing I'm I'm seeing Oppenheimer in 70 millimeter IMAX. Gorgeous. Three. Uh, that film is 11 miles long. Ooh, Kelly Murphy's <laughs> eyes are gonna be so big. They're gonna be so, so big. Blue. I can't wait to find out about the the complicated history of the making of the bomb and <laughs> how it helped us maybe end the war, but also unleashed a terror on the planet. Yeah. Apparently, it leaves you feeling very bad. <laughs> I can imagine. I mean, that's what the that's what people say. It's yeah, hard well. to leave on an optimistic note. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Of all like the Scientology. I think it was going to be a fun comedic romp. Yeah, that's for sure. Is he going clear or going queer, folks? Find oh, out okay, next time. Okay. I'm terminally bum, online. Bum, bum, bum. That's like a fun thing. Like over the summer, like, are you going to join Scientology or are you going to keep being gay? And at the end, you decide. <laughs> yeah. Like for August. I can go either way. Yeah. Drop some Easter eggs. Yeah, mix it up. <laughs>
those clips were awesome. Every once in a while, there's a movie that comes out where like the stunts and behind the scenes are like cooler than the actual movie, like Mad Max Fury Road. Like I could just watch those behind the scenes as many times as the movie. I guess one because you're, yeah, you're one. Are, yeah, one. You're going into the yeah. real world to watch a movie. That's cool. Hell yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll take it. I don't care. You yeah. guys are going to hate, hate mine. So I regret to inform you that Republicans are rapping. Fake like cake. I'm not fake, and I swim in a lake of truth. That's me, Vivek. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, a.k.a. Devek. Uh He <laughs> is freestyling there on Michael Smirconish's show. Oh, that show. was a freestyle? <laughs> yeah. I, was Except just, I just realized that there were two Everyone people in this room, room, room like, covering uh, their uh, eyes with their hands. It was so <laughs> he, he's the author of the books like Woke Inc., which attacks social justice mm-hmm, movements. Uh, not at all surprisingly, he now sells anti-woke investment products. So for a pretty big fee, you can buy into his ETFs and other investment products to, I guess, show how much you hate people like us. Uh, he's also running for president and hacked the system to get all this PR. Um, but guys, unfortunately, this is not the first time he rapped. Uh, Vivek was a libertarian rapper as an undergrad at Harvard. Here's another clip. Look, if you had one shot, one opportunity, you better lose yourself. If the views at the moment you own it, you better never let it go. You only get one shot, do not, because you can't blow. This opportunity comes. Okay, stop. Stop it, stop it, stop it before we lose all the subscribers. Uh, yes, he's covering Lose Yourself. I've, someone who's tried to karaoke an Eminem song, don't ever try it. It's impossible. He talks faster than you. Um, he competed in Harvard Open Mic Nights. I think that one was a competition to open for Busta Rhymes. So some really early odds throwbacks here. Busta Rhymes, an incredibly talented <laughs> yeah, rapper. Really good rapper. Oh, my God. Um, the, the Harvard Crimson wrote, uh, Davek only emerges when Ramaswamy is outfitted entirely in black, complete with a black Kango hat. Vivek told Politico, quote, I saw myself honestly making it big through American capitalism, and that's why Eminem's story spoke to me. I wonder if the part of the story where rapacious capitalists gutted Detroit <laughs> spoke to him as well, but, you know, whatever. Uh, he wants to raise the voting age to 25, which seems very uh, hip-hop to me. So, <laughs> guys, Yo. <laughs> bad news for you. Kids don't get a say. Yo. It, it gets worse, I'm sad to say. There's an entire genre of MAGA rappers. Uh, here's a clip from a Vice story that dug deep into this. They spent about 45 minutes with MAGA rappers. Finish the sentence for me. MAGA rap is freedom, faith, family, guns, Trump. Gun toting, Bible reading, God believing truth. We made a brand new culture. MAGA season. They call us MAGA rappers. My fans and my people are just Trump crazy. I am MAGA. Like, you can't get more MAGA than me. What them Patriots say. What them Patriots say. Trump's a boss. I'm a boss. Trump's got the hate. I got the hate. Trump had the girls. I got the girls. Trump's got the money. I'm getting the money. Me and my Lago, you feel me? It go down. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> so the guy with the face, the hands on the face have gotten worse. The guy with the face tattoo is named Forgiato Blow, aka Kurt. <laughs> His name is Kurt James. AKA Kurt. Oh, uh, because there already was a Curtis Blow. <laughs> there's another. There's Can't an... be Curtis Blow too and suck that much. <laughs> there's another rapper in that clip called Stony Dude. Bro, um, there's a whole industry of these guys who just like Ooh, make songs like names. very quickly. Uh, and what they're really good at is torturing people with um, songs about the news cycle. So, yeah, it's a dark, dark place, and there's a lot of MAGA rap, and they make a lot of money. <laughs> what do they call what? The people that listen to them? Are they the, the ear pluggalos? <laughs> Maggots? It's really good. I guess. <laughs> this, I, I just, and they're all from like Tampa. They all live I in clear mean, water. It's that very tracks. much like giving that like English literature te- literature teacher who's like, you know, Shakespeare is a lot like rap music. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That is it's there's nothing more hip hop, right? Mm-hmm. Than reinforcing existing social structures. Absolutely. That is what rap and punk really are all about. For sure. Yes, we, want, the we want stuff to say exactly the same and actually be even more established. Right. Mm-hmm. And, right. That, and that's that's like the rich should have more money because that it should be it should be even more rigid. Yeah, the original blues artists feared change. That was their issue. That's what <laughs> yep. they were. <laughs> yep. they were yeah, they about. played right on the beat every time. 
no improvisation. Uh, All of those notes are written clapping down. Clapping on one and three. Yeah, that's <laughs> what they did. All those notes are written down. Uh, do you square dance to that music? I'm like, not what's sure. the. Yeah, what's the, what's the motion in the ocean that happens when you are hearing that music? Is it. Is it, are you just getting online and donating at DonaldTrump.com? Is that it, your action? <laughs> I think it's a lot of like kind of electric sliding because they do most of their rapping at MAGA events. This One, is so this much. Is so, this is so stupid. It makes it's making me almost black out. Mm-hmm. And when I feel like that something is that stupid, I really become convinced that we are living in a simulation. I feel that too. We're living in a simulation. This is. I, this is this is these aren't real people. They're simulated. He did five versions of a Let's Go Brandon song, including a Christmas <laughs> version. <laughs> Stop. A Christmas, Christmas version. Let's go Brandon. Christmas. Let's go Brandon. Wow. Is it cozy? I don't know. I didn't. Is there it, jingle bells in the background? And the sound of a <laughs> crackling fire, but the, it's not like it's like crosses it's, burning. It's not. It's like just a real... guns. It's just guns. Oh. Tommy, that's a five. That's, Ooh. that's a yeah. hard five. The hard five. Hard, the hard oh, man. five. Damn. You watched a lot of MAGA rap. Hallie, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I was wondering, when like, why did we skip going Hallie? On. I thought we were um, doing a best for last thing. I don't want to believe the patriarchy, <laughs> Elijah, <laughs> that you simply skipped me and it have been ignoring me the whole time. But, I'm um, sick I'm with totally, myself right now. I'm totally happy to do mine, um, which is, I don't know if I would read this, but it was, of course it was Bill de Blasio and his wife, Charlene, Charlene uh, McRae's um, article in the New York Times announcing that they are se- going to be dating outside the marriage. They're not getting divorced, but they are separating, but they will continue to live together. And it is incredible. Incredible. And what I would say, well, I'll just read some uh, some articles. Uh, obviously, uh, for example, as a queer person. Um, oh, there it is. Uh, well, you know. You you know, put a you know Whenever you say as a queer person, we got to put a dollar in the jar. <laughs> yeah, and then donate it to votesofamerica.com slash fuckbands. <laughs> Um, there, so Charlene uh, uh, McRae was uh, a lesbian before she got married to Bill de Blasio, and Bill de Blasio basically calls that out in the article. He's like, for the guy who took the chance on a woman who was an out lesbian and wrote an article called I Am a Lesbian, de Blasio said, there was a part of me that would sometimes say, hmm, is this like a time bomb ticket? Is this something that you're going to regret <laughs> later on? So I always live with this stuff. That is a crazy that thing to say to the New York Times. To the New time. York <laughs> Times, I- baby! I loved every minute of this. I it was a baffling choice, <laughs> but also I was like, okay, obviously they it's like, oh, we both want to be dating, but then people are gonna be like, oh, are you out here cheating on your spouse? Well, we'll let everyone know at once by going to the New York Times three-hour interview. Incredible, and also it does feel kind of queer because they do seem like they're still friends. Based perhaps solely on the many beautifully shot photos of them holding hands, <laughs> and I guess what I liked about it is like this is something that like if you saw like a couple you know, do this online, you'd be like okay complicated, but hey you do you whatever. To go to the New York Times yeah. is to take an online sentiment which I support, and be like I'm gonna put this in the paper of note. Is so insane to me. Can you just like, read? Can you just read these three paragraphs? Yes. Yeah, so here, at the very end. <clears throat> oh, uh, here, I love a, I love a reading. Yeah. Uh, they it will is con- an audio format. They will continue. <laughs> you're absolutely right. <laughs> after playing a bunch of uh, videos, they will continue to share the home for for the time being. Miss McRae said, "For now, a photo of the couple in Times Square on New York's uh, New Year's Eve still greets visitors who may come, which may come to include suitors." Oh. Ms. McRae asked Riley if their phone numbers could be included in the newspaper. No. Can I put a picture from the gym in there? Mr. No. de Blasio asked. He added that he was, quote, not a believer in online dating. Well, you will be soon, honey. Good <laughs> luck. And and then they play a song. How did I not make it to the end of this? <laughs> wow. <laughs> and they play a song called Mango by a artist named, I think, Camus. And it's basically like, I love you so much that if you wherever, whatever you need to be happy, I will be here and I support it. And I'm like, again, that's great. It's just I've never had a kind of relationship where I'm like, we got to take it to the times and let them know that we're fucking outside the relationship. But I support it. Albert Camus made music. But yeah, you're right. Yes. You, when you're famous, you need a rollout strategy, or else people just accuse you of cheating. Yes. But here's what I would have gone with an Instagram. When post. you, when you, and maybe when even you a, do carousel. Right, oh, no. <laughs> a carousel. If you need multiple Full images. Carousel. We, we continue to love each other, but we're separated. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And there's just Why like a lot of like lovely photos. Fo- I, I. Did they give know. a reason in the in the interview? They, they say I that mean, they had a conversation. Get, they said, quote, we want to get freaky, end quote. <laughs> they said, we're both hungry for some strange. Oh, I'm no. not sure they didn't, they didn't specify that. <laughs> they said, I mean, after two I months ago. I thought that was real. I thought that was no, real. No, no, I mean. I mean, this, why did they go to the New York Times? She, she, she oh, no, said, no. Oh, yeah. She said, I just want to have fun, she said, adding, as imagine? Mr. de Blasio turned to her. It's not that we haven't had fun. 
Thank you, honey, he says. Every line barf, is barf, fucking hey, is insane. Barf, 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 barf. And also, like, these are obviously, like, conversations that everyone has privately in their own, like, I hey, guess. you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm like, you've been together a long time. Hey, what do you want to do? That's fine. To take it to the times. I loved it. I thought it was chaotic in a really fun and interesting way. During the three-hour interview, during which they cupped hands sporadically and once high-fived in agreement. <laughs> Yeah. It's making me long for the oh. Elliot Spitzer days. This is horrible. Also, he dyed his hair, which they mentioned in the oh, article. Yeah. Oh, then they say oh, it's yeah. like too dark. Oh, yeah. Oh, very. Oh, yeah. What? Uh, he, I never anticipated ever doing anything with hair color. He said it was now strikingly dark, close crop. Uh, oh. Adding that the current shading is a bit more pronounced than he attended. Also, what did it for her? What the final straw for her seemed to be his presidential campaign, which was. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. and the rest That's of America. Fair That's, yeah. That's yeah. fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Nobody wanted to fuck him after that. <laughs> But it does, the way they make it sound is like two months ago, they one of them came home and they just were like, hey, is this, are we, is this a rap? And they were both like, yeah, I guess so. So but this video is like, they probably were just like people who care about one another and probably were political, you know what I mean? Like they were mm-hmm. together politically yeah, and yeah, now yeah. it's like, well, we could have those things, but uh, we don't have to be, we could be seeing other people. It, how, isn't, there's kids, right? Yes, they're both grown though. They're both okay. like that, in their twenties. That 20s. could be part of the situation too. Yeah, yeah there's, you're their son. Right. Their son came to the office. But isn't it weird to say we don't plan a divorce? Where it's like, well, what happens when one of you meets someone and then you want to get divorced? Right, uh, then right, you're right. going to come back to the Times again, right. give an update. Hey, sorry, it turns out we are going to get divorced. Weird. Wow. That was it. awesome. That's a great. Yeah. We did. We did yeah. save the best for last. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and, and, and thank you so much to the former first couple. Of, of Did he York. really say he's not going to do online dating? Yes. I was like, of he's course you go will. To the what bar? are you talking about? Exactly. Like, what What bar? He's but an inconspicuous say... guy. He's like 6'8". Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess if you're in New York and you're single, God. have at it. Hey, it just like, this just keeps getting better. I'm going, you're going home with Bill de Blasio and you walk into the door and there's his wife. Yeah, at least still he lives with. Lovely to meet you. Uh, Oh wow. God, I'm reading this for the first time. It began with an offhand remark. Why aren't you lovey-dovey anymore, Mr. de Blasio asked his wife. Oh, my God. Yeah, look. Just, just, some things are for the Times, some things are for Why? the Times. I love to bring mess to the Times, and more people should be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> they should wow. be more online. This is the dangers of not being terminally online. Yeah. Yeah, this was maybe more of an Instagram post. I agree. Mm. Yeah. This is again t- uh, to the New York Times. Well, we'll all be talking about it on threads tomorrow. Mm, yeah, we can toot it. I, I, I mean, think for me, whatever we go do, whatever like <laughs> platform. It, it deserves to be skeeted. It just has to be. This is how I got on Tumblr like 14 years ago. Just me and my friend says, are we going to do this? So as long as there's enough people in the office going to threads, I'll do it. Yeah. yeah. You guys have to call I'll it. I'll check it out. I, say you I think the key it. is, what are we going to call Posting on threads because we've got two They're calling it threading. Threading. Just threading. threading. That's what they Zucks. say. Zucks. Nutting. I don't know. Oh, Nutting. N- Nutting. 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 Oh my god. Because well, it's skating. Elijah. <laughs> Let's go to last week where John Lovett interviewed presidential candidate Chris Christie. Oh yeah, remember that? I thought I it it was awesome. I texted John while I was listening to it and I said this is great and he said it was stressful as fuck. John, <laughs> why was it stressful as fuck? I was a little bit like a dog that caught the car. I was like, wait, why are we doing this? Why did I think this was a good idea? Oh, you he's really actually fought gonna... for it. You really I was like, let's it. let's go for it. Let's try it. And then uh uh no, it was fine. I mean, look, it was just uh I know there were people that were like, Why are we platforming this person? And I think that like there's like I think it's a reasonable question to ask. I do think sometimes we like overlearn the lesson from twenty sixteen, which was the seeing Trump's podium on four different channels at once and people think he was given sort of uninterrupted airtime to suck up all the oxygen, which I think is a fair critique. And I just want to make sure that if we're going to have Chris Christie on, it's like worthy of people's time. And it's a, not at just a place where he can say whatever he wants, but also B like, we're not just doing it to have a, like a old school cable news style fight. And so I just wanted to make sure that we figured out like, what are we actually trying to ask this person? What am I actually interested in? Why, do, what is the value of actually talking to him? And I do think like, you know, there are places where I really wish I'd like push back and like, in, you know, there's always going to be that. But like in hindsight, we're like, oh, I should have like jumped in there. I shouldn't have let that go to get to the next thing. But all in all, like, I think we spent a lot of time talking about what Republicans think and why they do what they do. And once in a while, probably good to direct that at an actual Republican in the flesh, which is why ultimately I thought it was worth doing. Did you did you know while recording it that you guys had a chemistry that left off the screen? I'm sure we're not a cheap date here because being against Trump is not enough. Well, I, look. That's for your judgment. Like, I didn't come in here thinking that I was going to turn you into a Christie voter. Mm, it's very sexual. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, sexual. It was, it was flirtatious Cut at times. Cut the tension with a knife. Yeah. Uh, look, just uh, two, two uh, 
two tri-state area boys who, right. who love pizza in America, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, well, that's been... what it was. Was there any suggestion of like getting together later for a drink just to chat? <laughs> he said, no, no, we're going to leave this here. I'm not interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> he would be a funny, like, I'd love to get him off the record and hear some stories. You know, he's got some hilarious stuff. Yeah, we, <clears throat> yeah, right after I did like make some, he's, I made some joke about the fact that he like that he'd hit some traffic and I was like probably could have used an extra tunnel into New York and he's like well it's not just one tunnel you don't know the project and then we kind of got into it for one nice. second off which I was appreciative uh, that's good but uh, yeah would you have Mike Pence on would, you would we Mike have Pence? Mike Pence on yeah so know. boring this is know. a future question that I have here Hallie is would you have any other Republicans on and I would love to have Mike Pence on <laughs> just because of how you went in on Christie for like how'd you square that. Like, how, how do you square your comments now with them? And then just doing that to Pence, who is way less quick on his feet and way deeper in to the shit than Christy was. Pence is just a talking point machine, though. He'll just be like, well, the Constitution, my favorite. Like, he just won't say anything. I think the, like, I think the standard has to be, like, do we think there's, like, a possibility of, like, a good faith discussion mm-hmm. of some kind? I think that's actually, like one of the challenges of the Trump era is once you've agreed to go along with Trump, you've sort of given up any credibility or sense that you can have an honest conversation because you've sold your soul. So that's why I think we would never have real Trump people on. And it's hard to figure out the, the, like the, the, the Venn diagram of people who disagree enough that it's like a worthy like debate, but the people who aren't so far gone that you're talking to like, just sort of sellouts who have no scruples? Yeah, I think it's a question of what is the purpose and the effect of having the person on, right? Like, I actually, personally, I don't think that, like, if we had Mike Pence on, I don't like the word, just this is a whole conversation about whether we should have Mike Pence on. Um, <laughs> if we had Mike Pence on, like, the platforming gets thrown around as a word, and I, th- mm. I think sometimes we don't, like, define it well enough. And it's like, I don't know that if we had Mike Pence on, that would um, uh, that would generate any Mike Pence supporters. Not one <laughs> right? person. So, like, I am not afraid not that one. having Mike Pence on, I don't know that suddenly having Mike Pence on, there'd be Pods of America listeners being like, you know what? I kind of like Mike Pence. I should. You say that. I, should, I don't know. You say <laughs> I that. I should suddenly support Mike Pence for president. But I do think that said, like, what is you you should have a purpose of having the person on right and i think that love it you went into that interview with a purpose which is okay great that chris christie is trying to defeat trump now but like how did he how did he do that 180 right and like shouldn't he have to answer for all the shit that he did before and and what was he thinking and what was the decision making process so there was like a a real there was a there was a value to that i think um and i think if you go into one of these interviews with that in mind and not just like, oh, I'm talking to a Republican because I'm talking to a Republican, then it could be worthwhile. I think the other thing we learned from some of our candidate interviews in 2020 was if you use the opportunity to ask them about things they don't often get asked about, sometimes you can elicit new information and something interesting. Yes. I still don't think Mike Pence is going to say anything interesting, but like right. I could imagine talking to Nikki Haley trying to press her on foreign policy in ways that like the other press corps just finds boring, so they don't. So are there Republicans you think that are out there? Like, Are we softening the ground for Tim Scott with, with that bit or... I mean, part of it is if they're willing to come up. Like, I think that the Love It and Christie thing was a perfect mix of he is a Republican that we'd feel comfortable having on because he's out there trying to destroy Trump. And also, he seemed desperate enough to want to be on Pod Save America. <laughs> yeah, and also, there's no so like, conceivable way he will be president. So they're right, sort yeah. of like, okay, good. Like, even if somehow one person was like, I will vote for Chris Christie, it's not going to happen. Like, look, if Tim you know Scott I mean? if Tim Scott wanted to come on, I would want to sit here and grill him for 30 minutes on, like, how could you have responded to this indictment by saying that, like, there's a two-tiered system of justice and they're just after Trump and blah, blah, blah. Like, did you, you were in the Capitol that day? Like, what are you, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, yeah. I would love to go in on that. He's also, like, I'm the kinder, gentler version of the GOP guy. And he's also just demagoguing the hell out of gay people and trans people all day long. He's saying things that are just as vicious about men and women playing sports together. I mean, he's just, you know. Yeah, how is that, yeah. like, love thy neighbor as thyself, right? right. Yeah, I would love to ask those questions. Yeah, I also, um, I also think, like one other sort of meta reason that it's worth considering having people like that on is the, all the concern around platforming 
it's like the goal isn't to build like a magnificent delicate information cathedral that you don't touch it's like you have to try to get people to go inside <laughs> and i think we spend a, on the left the right doesn't give a fuck about any of this they'll talk to anybody like joe rogan will talk to anybody ben shapiro will people talk to anybody and they spend a lot less time worrying about who they're going to platform or not in part because they have fewer scruples um but that does leave a lot more room to think about like what's interesting what makes this an exciting debate for people to listen to what makes this contentiousness uh worth clicking on and i think we would do well on our side to think a little bit more about like how do we keep people engaged and thinking like this is the center of the debate this is where people have to come uh um for good and for ill so if you don't listen don't fucking listen yeah it's fine mm. it's a podcast delete it yeah. okay cameron wants to know i'm starting a podcast don't that's the advice don't do it i'm starting a podcast and i have a placement uh, i have a placeholder segment name what do y'all suggest i do to workshop a replacement for the title what? what's, what's what? the name what's it about they don't the they fuck? didn't they didn't say Hey, they they just you, say, how do you come up with segment ideas? How do you come up with segment ideas? This is not going to do well. <laughs> hey, man, listen, here's what <laughs> I'd on. say. I'd say, I'd say, make the podcast. Worry about naming the segment. Like, what are you like? I, you're like worrying about the wrapping? What are you, what are you making? We, What's in the box? We would just we would do yeah. a we would do a brainstorm session. Gather some of your friends. Get in a conference room. Yeah. I don't like upstarts and I don't like people competing with us. I don't care what you're, you're say, saying. You're saying no about. new wow. podcast. That's it. No new podcast. That's no, fair. I mean from us. Right, yeah. You are my competitor. <laughs> yeah, you're asking for the guy. You're asking this from a segment named the advice column. So, <laughs> what else? What else and you then got? this is from great name Chief Iglesias interpreter. Interpreter. Uh, oh, they, oh boy. <laughs> they want to know. I'm turning thirty soon, and I've been thinking a lot about aging and what it does to a person. Shut well, I enjoy oh these God. days better in my early 20s. I can't deny that I tire more easily, get aches here and there, and know it's only going to get worse as I become older. With the pod save team mostly hitting their 40s, oh, I was wow. wondering what you all do to stay youthful. Um, oh. uh, drink adrenochrome. I, I have like a cyanide capsule in, my t- in the back of my tooth, and every day I'm like, I'm, I can't, if I, it's there if I need it. It's there if I need it. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> So that's one idea. Um, Can't top that. Can't top that. Well, you don't know. exercise, you know. Eat, eat yeah, healthy. I, I, don't I, go I to exercise. restaurants. I don't go to yeah, restaurants. I'm not, I'm not giving this trolling question a real response. Shut up about your 30s. It's gonna be great. 30s are You're great. You're gonna have a blast. 30s are great. I never felt better in my 30s. Yeah, I actually think. Um, I, I'd give anything to be 30 again. Oh. All right. I actually think uh, 20s, 20s to 30s is like a lot of like brain changing. 30 to 40, you really just, your body does begin to really fall apart. If you think you're aching now, just wait. No, for it's, me, it was 40. 40. 40. Whew, it's kind of like a fun really game, though, to like recalibrate once you realize, like, oh, no, if I do something wrong, then I wake up at 2 in the morning. Like, yeah. that's, like, it's like, it's you kind of have to make, have fun with it, or else it will make you go insane. You know what helps? Z-biotics. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah, but suddenly you're more hungover from, like, a too big late dinner than you are from actual Yeah, alcohol. it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. like, am I dying, or did I have a snack too late? Yeah, that's the real issue. <laughs> Sleep. Sleep's important. Which you won't be able to do. <laughs> Which you won't be able to do. That'll wrap up the advice column. That'll wrap up terminally Great. online. What a note to leave on. God damn it, Elijah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Learn how to <laughs> sequence a fucking show. You'll never be able to sleep You again. want some advice on that? Yeah, what kind of, yeah, I got advice for Elijah after yeah, we're done. Is, go ahead, go ahead. Give, give the advice because Cameron could use it. How to improve right. the podcast uh-huh. is what the people want. Uh-huh. All right. Video meets the red uh, table. Good stuff. Thanks for listening to Terminally Online. We'll see you all next week. <laughs> It's almost certified fresh. <laughs> <laughs>